Today we look a bit in the Threads API and how it looks like in Java. Uh, if you're using C Sharp, it also exists the Threads API and it was introduced in 1996. It's really old uh, low level API and basically it's used already uh, in some frameworks or uh, libraries or uh, you will find some threads uh, already in some programs nowadays also and why they decided to use it to threads API because during this period uh, basically uh, exist computers or the all computers was uh, really not so perform not really I know you. It was not high end systems like during those years, and it was the beginning of computer uh, industry or computer chips like CPUs. And basically, CPUs was a common CPUs was single core only. And when you have some programming language, of course, you orient it to this single core. Uh, processors basically and to buy uh, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, different CPUs for a single task it's really expensive task and basically of course those uh, systems or workstations exist during those years uh, but uh, when you need to buy a lot of uh, CPUs for for some problem solving. It's really expensive and not efficient to to work with it, with it. And for that reason, of course, introduce it some lightweight or low level level APIs, which is helps you uh, to create virtual CPUs. Basically, uh, in Java or in, uh, other languages which is using threads, is idea is really simple. When you have draw.io, I'm just opening here uh, some image. Um, basically, idea is to create virtual uh, CPUs. Like you have like, um, if you're using Java, you're using JVM back. You're using JVM, and when you're creating threads, you're creating virtual CPUs. How many threads? That many you creating virtual CPUs. And doesn't matter if you having uh, a single core or multiple core CPUs. Basically, it doesn't matter really. Uh, when you calling uh, when you talking about threads API, it really doesn't matter. Uh, later, they introduce it uh, for multi-core systems. Uh, as you see here, starts from two or Java fifth version, because we able uh, automatically to detect how many cores your system have, and those systems takes those tasks or background tasks or process uh, how how you would like to say, call it those names. But when you have single core machines, yeah, they created vir vir virtual CPUs for same, um, for same JVM, for example, or other virtual machines, which language is using. And that uh, makes your work more, uh, you have more performance and it's cheaper to have virtual CPUs instead of uh, real CPUs. Uh, of course, if you need some really intensive task calculations, of course, it's better working in uh, different CPUs or multiple CPUs, not the cores. But for that reason, it's really expensive. They decided to make it cores and yeah, when you're working with parallel systems, you're able to 
uh, use those cores also for your uh, tasks to divide your task into small pieces and work it. In Thread CPI, you don't need any cores. It really doesn't matter. You you need to create threads to work with CPU. And of course, if you need to stop it or slow down a bit threads, because uh, when you have a lot of threads run it, basically you take and call uh, CPU performance. Because uh, the main problem when you have a lot of threads, you're taking a lot of uh, resources during this period and you have a lot of intensive tasks to, between those threads without any stop, you're able to get your CPU, for example, 100%, for example. Like you have here, and I'm just creating a new task to introduce to that API and to show the methods, which is already implemented. Basically, not much exists. Well, maybe a creating project, simple Java project, and later we back to our example and try to update to me using Threads API. Untitled. New window. Basically, when you're running uh, main, you're running main thread. Uh, the main thread it runs main process, and JVM by default have a single thread, and it calls the main thread. And in Java, when you're working with uh, thread API, you need to import uh, Java util dot or oh, not util. I forget lang maybe. Just easier to find when you're using old import. Red is from java.lang library. And you're able to get some methods if you want. Oh, sorry, we need inside here. And I need to make that different mode, presentation mode. And yeah. Basically, when you're running any task, you're running in the main thread. Like, you running thread and thread, you're able to create new thread. If you would like to create new thread, you're able to do like this. But if you would like to say uh, system out of line to console uh, current thread uh, name, for example, you're able to call uh, thread dot current thread. And you're able to get uh, Simple name, maybe get name, it's enough. And when you're calling thread get current name, you will get current name thread. Yeah. Current name is main. You're able to change the name and then do any other stuff. Uh, when you would like to create new threads here, uh, you need to know that there is two types of implementation ways uh, using a uh, runnable interface or using the thread class ex uh, extending. And ba basically, if you're creating new class or new object, like some... Mm -hmm, uh, process for just print. Uh, we have print uh, process, for example, and we need to make it print as a thread, as a separate thread, or or you can call it as a background thread or separate thread. Basically, uh, it la uh, it runs parallel in your app, but using uh, using the same uh, memory and of course same cpu but uh, running in the separate uh, separate part of process but also threads have a th call stack different call stack 
And when you have the basic call stack, which is running your instructions like methods, callings, or other stuff in threads, you have the each thread have call stack. Stack is separate for each thread. Thread one. Basically, you're creating different call stacks for each uh, thread. And when you're creating print thread, you're able to make it, you know, constructor if you need it. Uh, great name uh, for thread, for example, if you need. And we're able to make it more functions here. But the main function which is you needed to uh, launch uh, intensive task or any uh, input output operation intensive or some uh, other task which is from network call or this matter. Some blocking task. Blocking which is mentioned the thread executing till it finished. Or just be able to control and say if that thread not finished till some uh, moment, you should destroy this thread or stop it, or something like that. Interrupt. Uh, we need to override methods, and when you go override methods, exists single method which is really important and single one you needed to know. It's run. Uh, run methods basically run a uh, separate thread or new thread in background and you just implement here what you're doing here. You're able to make it, doesn't matter, it's like system out, print line, printing for example. Um, here is a basic task which is do that process or separate thread. And you're able to do anything here, like, but you're not able to do anywhere outside the run methods because it will be the it will out to the main thread. It. Maybe I would like to print, yeah, good. Uh, I will print the current thread uh, working here, for example. Uh, thread dot current thread is get name. Basically, when we're creating thread print, we setting name uh, for thread. And in main, now we see the current thread name. Instead of creating like this, and we printing this, we just creating our print. New print. And here we say that uh, print thread. And the main issue when uh, some programmers uh, working and doesn't know which method runs the thread. Basically, when you call in here, you're able to run. And when you're running here and hitting run, you will get a strange results. It's like printing and main. Maybe we changing here, get name and writing here. current thread working and we just see the results printing current thread working main uh, because we running method as a simple method not as a new thread and instead of run you should use star start and start method starts or runs uh, main uh, separate thread 
when you running you see printing current is working print thread that means you're running this print thread when you're running start and we will also need to see the more uh, more uh, images here i added i later explain about single core and multiple core i'm not having here but it's really a basic idea i introduce about single or multi-core um, now when we have the print we have separate threads like Basically, it's working in separate threads. If we try to write infinity loop, I don't know if we see some. And oh, well, true. Uh, we just creating inside. I need just for testing. I'm just running inside a loop, creating object and starting the thread. Basically infinity loop. And as you see, CPU takes a lot of, it's like 48. Of course, my CPU is not a low, lower end, but it's a bit, a bit better. But it's taking uh, half processor and basically if you have that more intensive task here it's only printing task which is taking half processor uh, it's really a lot and sometimes when you're working with low, uh, a lot of threads you able to get uh, slower results or, or something it depends on CPU uh, here and why it's up so high uh, because we doesn't have any uh, we doesn't have any stops here and to stop thread it's easy easiest way to say the sleep print dot sleep oh. uh, how to sleep it Uh, sleep we should sleep main threads or not print run start join okay we able to thread sleep only that main threads sleep basically we're able to add sleep 10 milliseconds for example and just throw, add exception throw. And when you're running now, uh, you see that our result is really different. Uh, instead, when we adding uh, 10 milliseconds, basically it works like same way, but it saves a lot of performance instead of 50 percent performance we back to 10 percent for example and that 10 percent maybe it's from other process not from single process and those leaps it's really needed when you're working with threads api because if, if you never are sleeping some separate threads you will get some uh, cpu overheads and it's really too much uh, why why that's happening in simple uh, CPU uh, architecture when you have for example single core CPU and basically that CPU is made from uh, frequency like some bandwidth or some frequency uh, you have some execution engine you have a lot of engines uh, added to, 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 to your um, to your CPUs 
uh, different uh, architecture, different, ty different types or of CPUs have different, uh, a bit different structure. But basic idea is there is some execution engine, there is some math processor, and there is a queue. And as you see here, those instructions, when you're writing the program, basically here is a program. Um, uh, when you're writing, doesn't matter, like, like those lines here, uh, you're creating some instructions to CPU, for example. And here is those instructions, that means uh, CPU instructions, and it, it, it will executing like pipeline because we have the queue. And we have our system memory, basically RAM memory, and we have four gigs or more gigs RAM, and we just uh, storing all stuff inside the memory because when you have a stack or cold stack or uh, heap memory also, when you're creating programs, you're storing this in for here and then you just uh, pumping this those instructions to cpu from ram using the bus buses and those buses it's a lot of different buses uh, communication between cpu it's like a straight communication between uh, for example bus for, for ram bus uh, for uh, other stuff buses also exist and basically it communicates with processor ram populates some data and gives uh, to cpu cpu takes and adds the queue and of course there is response delay time and etc on the ram bandwidth or or uh, frequency and basically when you're passing those instructions you're adding to the queue and processor executing this uh, from queue, like in pi pipeline. And for that reason, if you have a lot of threads, you have a lot of uh, stuff given to processor and it's really hard to work with that. And I forget how it calls, there is some constant, which is represents the time uh, processor response for your, for those, um, for example, you switching windows here, it's really 11 or milliseconds, I'm not sure how many, um, slice time, yeah, slice time, when you just working. And basically here is a single core CPU and you just pushing this stuff. Um, here, as you see, of course, I'm not finished to make that uh, in fancy way all stuff here. I need to draw more images. And you have the program, like you have get function, get add together, store result in memory. And you have instructions, like as I mentioned here, like in hex uh, format, like 682b. If you have binary, you have zero ones, the same instructions. And you're passing those that program to that queue. Uh, basically, when you have the uh, multi-core CPUs, the difference between multi-core CPUs, there is some schedule, uh, schedule uh, timer, I forgot how you could call it. There is some uh, it's really work like uh, separate CPUs, but, but but a bit different way. And it maybe basic difference between the single core and uh, multi core uh, is only that you have the single queue here, and you are able to execute queues uh, like pipeline, like first, second, third, fourth. Uh, when you have the multi-core, you're able to use uh, more than single at once. More, more than, than single instructions at once, you're able to call it. 
And later I finished to draw my image for multi-core system and I, I explain in more, more details. And also I mentioned then about the hyper-threading technology, how it works. And yeah, maybe I will show the next lecture about that stuff. And yeah, multi-core systems is really great solution. And in Java, as, as I mentioned from Java 5, when uh, comes uh, thread pools or fork joints, when you're able to use those uh, multi-core uh, processors for some pro problem solution, yeah, it's really a great uh, uh, architecture to work with that type APIs, like with threads APIs or uh, concurrency parallel APIs. And yeah, it's much cheaper to have eight cores processor instead of eight separate single core CPUs. It's a lot of cheaper. And basically, in some cases, you're able to reach the same uh, performance for, for solving the same problem. Or just a bit less than when you're buying that separate CPUs. Um, when you have the threads, uh, basically, you need to understand two stuff here. What is multitasking? Uh, Process-based multitasking. Um, basically, you're able to have any process multitasking, and it's called multiprocessing, where each process has address in memory. And each process allocates separate memory area. Uh, here is called multitasking. When you have the thread-based multitasking, the thread-based multitasking termed as multi-threading. Basically, you're creating threads for multitasking also, but where threads share the same address space. Instead of separate addresses, you get the same shared. For that reason, you get a lot of problems when you're working with low-level APIs, like Threads API for, from Java first. After there, this comes a lot of uh, user-friendly or programmer-friendly APIs, which is uh, easier to manage and to avoid some stuff like uh, deadlocks and, and, and other anomalies. Like, it's really a lot of stuff happening when you using the shared uh, memory, for example, same address. Because you need to raise between those threads and etc. cetera. Um, the life cycle of threads working like this. You have runnable, you have new thread, because you're able to create interface runnable or use new thread, using new thread. And new thread begins the life cycle in the new state. Uh, the process remains in this condition until program starts thread. Yeah. And basically, you're starting and waiting uh, when program starts this thread. Uh, runnable as soon as new thread starts. Uh, the thread status becomes runnable. At this stage, thread considered to execute function or working. Basic task. Uh, not runnable thread when entered the time waiting for that state, a specific interval time. That time, the thread not in runnable condition. Uh, Basically, if you have some function is run, is alive or not alive, and or is run or something like that calls you, that thread will be not runnable, for example. Uh, dead or terminated, the runnable thread enters the end stage when it compiles its tasks. 
yeah um threat properties yeah assigns each threat priority that concludes how threat will be treated concerning others basically you have thread priorities are uh, integers that specify relative priority one of each other and thread priorities are used deciding when to switch from one uh, running thread to another it is called context switch yeah and those priorities are really not 100 percent guaranteed to make it uh, work like you intended uh, because it works like uh, one thread priority one it's second one is 10 and after this it could calculate something adding in some counter and after counter reaches that number you will be executing this thread for example basically i need only for this lecture only the methods of the threads api um yeah thread sh scheduler um, basically uh, in multi-core system it's really use the same idea uh, thread scheduler uh, Uh huh. Yeah, may maybe we just able to read it a bit here about single core systems, like existing thread scheduler provided by JVM. Uh, decided which threads runs at given time. Uh, the scheduler gives a small time slice to each thread. Like when you're switching those threads, you're losing some. Uh, time but it's really a uh, small time so and at any given time we have only thread which is actually running in, in the processor but because of the time slicing we get feeling that multiple threads are running at the same time um, yeah and multi-core systems even in multiple core system threat scheduler is involved and but since we have multiple cores we can actually have multiple threads running at exact same time and yeah in single core systems you're thinking that we are running at the same time multiple threads and in multi-core systems yeah you able to run it in the exact same time for example, if we have dual core system, then we have two threads running at exact same time. The first thread will run at the first core and second thread will run at second. Uh, why you need it? Multi threading, of course, you need it. Uh, for example, two fetches from web uh, API and one you need to wait 10 seconds for each also need to wait 10 seconds and if you make it a synchronous code you will wait 20 seconds uh, if you make uh, async code or asynchronous code or um, doesn't matter it's blocking code uh, using the thread cpi uh, maybe you win some time um, you're able to run different parts concurrently to help improve responses the responsiveness of system basically when you're creating desktop apps you will always need to see interactive apps and if you would like to have interactive stuff you should use uh, some uh, high load tasks in background and the main problem when you faced uh, systems, like for example, there is the Android uh, apps, and in Android exists only the single thread, and you're not able to create uh, separate threads, 
uh, there is only that UI thread for in which we're working and threads also too expensive for, for those devices more and instead of this they introduce some coroutines it's really similar to thread te technique uh, but it also used the same ideas like for async programming to run in background like to making background threads um, there is some solutions for each uh, problem uh, if you have single thread um, architectures you will get some other technique to solve uh, using some parallel or concurrent uh, libraries and when you uh, extending thread class as i show uh, implementing runnable interface implementing callable uh, by using executor framework along runnable and callable tasks uh, because we're not uh, call, talking about the executor framework now we're talking about the threads the basic api uh, definition of, of daemon uh, daemon basically there is some exist some uh, daemon threads for that reason i'm just copying a bit code i need to rewrite here um, what does it mean the daemon definition of daemon a uh, background process that handles requests of for services such as print spooling file transfers and dormant when not required um, yeah you just uh, have some background processing if using daemon threads uh, what is a daemon thread in java uh, daemon threads can shut down at any time in between the flow uh, non daemon the example user thread execute completely daemon threads are run uh, threads that run intermediately in the background as long as non daemon threads are running when all uh, non threads complete daemon threads terminates automatically basic idea when you have the main thread for example and uh, main threads uh, stop executing and if your thread will be uh, for example our uh, print uh, set daemon true if you say that here is a daemon thread and it should finish earlier when finished for example run main but now of course we have infinity loop um how to make here maybe we just remove this loop and i'm not sure now how to make it uh, okay we are running just system out hello um Printing. Okay, we're running again. Is it possible to make thread sleep? No, not like this. Maybe I need uh, other example. Oh, if we make it like this. Yeah, and as you see here, when you not stopping the main thread, which is non daemon thread, basically you just not waiting to finish the task for print if you say that here is daemon uh, you're able to make false and you see the different results it prints 
our code. Um, if you say the daemon true, I'm not sure is it possible to make brain dot join. Oh, not not here. Maybe sorry. Uh, here. Let's see. Yeah, and join means like wait until it finished. Uh, like say wait and until I finished job. Yeah. Basically, we created a thread here, and our main thread, which is automatically runs when you're running program, it also prints a system hello, but it waits, doesn't matter if a daemon or not daemon thread, or you just able to remove this and join and wait till it executes or finish job. Basically, daemon is process, which is not really uh, important, or if not finished, really not 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 a problem. Uh, daemon threads, as you see, of course, there are some use cases. Threads are service providers for user threads running in the same process. Uh, the JVM does not care about daemon threads to complete when running in state. Not even finally block, also let execute. JVM do give preference non daemon threads that is created by us. Daemon threads act as services in Windows. And. Yeah, daemon threads as a service in Windows. As JVM stops the daemon threads when all user threads are terminated hence daemon threads can be used to implement for example a monitoring functionality as thread is stopped by jvm as soon as all user threads have stopped there are some use cases when you needed those uh, daemon threads but the moment we are not looking at some uh, example. Basically, here commonly use thread class methods, and as you see here, public void use perform action for thread. Uh, basically, we never run, uh, we never call that function from code. We need to run or use start instead of this. Sleep to sleep your current thread. Join waits for a thread to die. Basically, when it finish work, it die, and when you calling the function is alive, you will get some uh, thread is not alive. Uh, when you're using join milliseconds, you wait uh, some milliseconds for for finish, for example. I need to wait 22 milliseconds. If if the thread not finished, it will be it will die. If will destroy it. Just like uh, get priority, you able to get priority. Like you able to create a print dot set priority, and here you able to say medium oh min max medium i think or two priorities threads we need all uh, minimum is one uh, max is 10 norm is five we're just picking any of that priority for example max And if you see that here is a max priority, that thread should be taken first. And yeah. Uh, you are able to get name, set name. You are able to current thread with return current executed 
current thread basically returns uh, get id uh, thread state you get state i never tried this maybe we need to print it um, go to print and system out thread current or get state oh current thread get uh, state name we try to print object oh we got state from our uh, thread runnable as you see here after join we should get state different one uh, dead or destroy i don't know uh, we try to print uh, get state oh terminated sorry uh, when the thread is uh, joined and finished work is becomes terminated if you call the current thread like the main maybe and we get state we try to see that main is it runnable or is it uh, terminated yeah is it runnable here uh, before uh, print it prints out uh, our uh, before it prints the text, the main thread is runnable. Able to hear say which thread is working. Like working or oh. thread working. And here we just adding the name. Uh, we adding a name for our current thread. Uh, get name. And this separate. And basically we get thread working. Name is main and runnable state. Basically able to control your full flow of multi-threading programs. When you have those uh, stuff uh, is alive test if threads alive basically if you got terminated here your thread will be not alive if you printing is it print alive uh, print dot get state you will get not oh uh, terminated uh, instead terminated sorry is a live method yeah is it print alive we said we got the result false well, basically we need to check somewhere maybe uh yield cause it a currently executing thread object to temporarily pause and allow other threads to execute uh, yield maybe we try to make it yield here with not here um how it's called it yield i need example yields java uh, yield sleep and join yield 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 Maybe there is some example. 
join now it's need more interesting examples Uh, inside the synchronized blocker method. Okay, maybe we're not able to make it here. We may be able to make it yield only for main threads now. And if we make it uh, stop, for example, Oh, but no, we're not, not able to make it for, for print now. Okay, we, we have some yield. At the moment, I don't have a simple example how it works, but you're able to temporarily pause and allow other threads to execute. Uh, sometimes you need it. Suspend, resume, stop is deprecated because you not you face a problems and it's deprecated methods. Uh, when you try to call it, print suspend, as you see, it shows as deprecated, and you see able to use it, but you will face some problems. So, uh, and here is a deprecation message. Uh, this method has been deprecated as it is inherently deadlock prone if the target thread holds a lock on the monitor protecting a critical system resource when it's suspended. No thread can access this resource until the target thread is resumed. If the thread uh, that would resume the target thread attempts to lock this monitor prior to calling resume deadlock results, such as deadlocks type of manifests stem cell process process from on uh, basically it faces some problems and if deprecated better not using or read it what is when it's facing problems and using them only uh, is the diamond test this thread uh, is diamond thread and set diamond use setting. Uh, public void interrupt interrupts the threads, basically able to interrupt. And public is interrupted, tests if the thread has been interrupted. Able to check if the thread was interrupted. Uh, public stable interrupted, test current thread has been interrupted. Yeah. There is two different, public boolean and public static boolean methods basically all methods you will find also in java language uh, library and yeah uh, uh, my goal is for, for this course instead of looking to the basic classical examples doing this i'm just uh, making some example and how to use those different frameworks and to see between differences between those um, a few few dec decades differences when you're working with threads API and basically when you need really low uh, low level API to control the threads of course the best way is to use the threads API and but when you're working with a better or modern APIs for simple tasks. It's really better to use uh, new frameworks or APIs, which is added in uh, older or later versions. But yeah, for some cases, you still need to use Threads API. For some cases, uh, you need to use modern uh, APIs or frameworks. And 
now basically we already have uh, some implementation of our product uh, service basically we have the single product with which have product option product info and product rating uh, some details some graphic some image like uh, some text and that's it and those options uh, comes from some outside server or external uh, third party server for example or uh, different uh, servers for task solution from, di from different teams it doesn't matter from somewhere and we got some um, example which is displaying uh, simple form simple form which is loading some images with some text and we loading uh, that information in of course separate thread uh, because when you loading ui you should load this ui in separate thread and when i used sorry i need to go to the uh, main program product service and you will see here a swing utilities and low clayton basically it runs our ui in separate thread in ui thread which is called swing utilities or swing thread and maybe we will found some here uh, we need to invoke later and as you see here we are running in uh, runnable to run and i forget to mention about the runnable first yeah okay uh, we need back to the untitled and when you're creating the thread you're able to extend or implement extend the class thread and that means you override the run method and this uh, will be the thread if i would like to create using interface you're able to create the, uh, in different way using a runnable interface and we need to create a class for example we have print and send doesn't matter send for example functionality runs in separate threads and here instead of uh, writing extends we write implements runnable and here you should implement run method which is runs that process in background like not in background but in separate thread sorry sending and we just uh, printing for example uh, current thread and we are running thread current thread and of course if you're implementing you're able to change the name and etc but i don't know is it possible to now hmm. um, we able to create constructor maybe Send constructor. Yeah, we need a field. We need to pass run. Okay, maybe we not creating separate some stuff. We are just creating our class, which is uh, send and have marked as the runnable. Runnable have only the single method, which is called abstract void run. And this run is combined with Java Lang thread API. And basically it works the same way, but you need to create your uh, thread, separate thread uh, outside. Uh, instead of using print, you're creating print runnable. And after this, you need to run the thread. Difference between when you're creating and using runnable interface 
you should create your print runnable print uh, runnable for example equals new print and oh not print i'm sorry send send runnable equals new send and now you should create a thread for example send send thread equals new thread and you need to pass uh, you have a lot of stuff thread group able or runnable target like runnable is send runnable uh, you wrapping that stuff inside the thread and you able to run the thread normally as before start and when you're running you're running the send thread yeah sending printing yeah and here as you see we've got current thread thread zero five priority thing that and uh, main and basically as you see priority here is max we got my minimum priority uh, you see that difference between those two uh, maybe i need to comment those lines doesn't matter which place i added the code because i added start here and this thread runnable runs runnable and separate thread which is send and should send some stuff and when you set minimum priority you see the different result uh, because uh, the thread i think that here is priority five and this is current threads shows that is uh, our print is send or with lowest priority is print if you say that here is max it will be a different situation no it's the same sending printing okay basically nothing happening here uh, but we see uh, we see different results when you're working with threads basically you see the different results um, you you running here and basically a print thread always wins because it has a better uh, better priority Yeah, but that priority doesn't mean that uh, or every time that asked it will be 100% guarantee that it will be executed first or like this. Yeah, and we have two types when using runnable and when using extends. Why you need a runnable? Of course, we need because if you extending some other class like doesn't matter send service uh, send service basically we are not able to extend more than one class for that reason you're not able to say that we are extending thread for that reason using runnable interface and you're solving this problem and you just wrapping this runnable uh, object to thread object and just start Uh, basically that's it uh, for a uh, simple intro to thread api and now we try to move it forward to our example and try to use it thread api inside our thread started project uh, later i will update this code and uh, sharing shared um and now we have on the product uh, product info product option and product rating 
basically here it's our models or some uh, some objects with some properties like stars rating price description title image URL uh, ID option list and ID info rating yeah. we also have product info service in which we already used some uh, stops like 11 milliseconds we use the threads um, just to mimic like network call here but we just creating simple list and return this list we have product rating service in which we uh, adding uh, new stars and rating just we just returning something by id if you have some api call but now we not adding this i'm just using the local solution here and after a few lessons we adding maybe and that network call for example but it's really there is no difference with, between those network call or not because you will get some delay you're able to make delay using thread sleep yeah uh, we have product ui in which we created a list we have a lot of stuff uh, and just ui stuff like image icon lists cell lend, renderer uh, we have ui basically we don't need for our case now to look to that ui and we have the separate thread for ui and basically when you running uh, app you need to create separate uh, separate threads for our case uh, basically we need to create threads for those two services like basically if we will get a network and here also network or web API or does matter uh, some tasks which is uh, executing from outside and now if I make the delay like when you're running this app I already showed that it's running instantly it's okay uh, if you're blocking like few seconds Maybe we need to make some uh, stopwatch. Is it exist? Stopwatch Java. Hmm. Commons. Stopwatch create started. Do something. Stopwatch stop. Mm -hmm. Spring framework. I don't have a spring framework. Basically, we able to use stopwatch. Part as to the lib jar. We just should look here. Uh, sorry and close this one and open this one and stop no it's not exist stop watch uh, long start equals millis long and legal system just try to calculate that how how much it takes to execute this code and when we do like this we need to print it out uh, it takes uh, start or and mind start i forget how to calculate uh, start will be, for example, zero. Then, then, then. 
Is it correct or not? Uh, start current time. Stop minus start. And minus start. Yeah, maybe it's like this. Um, it takes, and we adding ms, for example, milliseconds. Uh, when you're running this code, you will see that some result, how many it takes. Uh -oh. um, it takes 25 milliseconds. Uh, we go into the service and we got that thread sleep, for example, mm, 2000 or two seconds. Uh, when you're running, as you see, we got, uh, it takes 2015 milliseconds. Maybe we able to print it error, like red color. Yeah, it takes to 16 milliseconds. Okay, and now if we making a product service, also adding 2000 milliseconds. Uh, it took uh, 4000 milliseconds. Basically, it's blocked, uh, blocked by uh, it blocking, blocking, uh, blocking process because it's using a single threaded solution here. And basically, if that thread uh, first is blocked for two seconds, uh, other thread also blocked for two seconds. And of course, if that first server not first uh thread not respond uh your app will crash or you get some uh, timeout or something exception and yeah the threads not solving all 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 problems but you're able to control and later to check it if timeout you're able to make that sorry it the uh, respond takes too much or too long, and etc. Right? And now we should to implement those two services in separate threads. Um, I'm making the easiest way to implement the classes, like the inner classes in Java, or I'm not sure, maybe. I need to create separate classes. Um, hmm. I'm not sure which is better approach. Maybe I implement separate uh, runnable threads. And I created new uh, package. And like threads, thread. And we creating our threads for uh, basically um, for info, product info, and we creating uh, product info runnable maybe. Yeah, we creating print uh, product info runnable. But you're able to create a not runnable, but maybe sometimes you need it to create product info using runnable. Uh, product info runnable. And basically, we implementing a runnable interface. And we implement a run method. Uh, the main idea, because we running some uh, server server call, we need to pass some parameters. And for that info, we need, of course, the uh, private string ID. And we need also 
some info, product info. Uh, private product info, product info. And we need the constructor to initialize to pass the ID from the outside from the somewhere from UI or doesn't matter. Just constructor with ID. Uh, we get the product info ID passing through the in product info runnable. Uh, now we should return our info. And the easiest way to generate getter for ID. Oh, no, we're not uh, for info, sorry. And maybe ID is also key. Okay. Getter for product info. And now we have our uh, thread in background, or just some thread, which is running our service from network call or somewhere. Yeah, and what we need to do here, we need to call our product info equals product info get or not. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe we creating this because it will be easier to create it as the inner classes inside a product service. I'm just going uh, to the product service and we got here services already implemented and used inside the main yeah uh, better i use in the same class it will be easier to make it here to read it later uh, i have product service class and i able to create uh, inner classes like not public but uh, private just some class maybe static doesn't matter i'm just creating some uh, and here uh, product service we able to retrieve some info and we able to pass it id id from our inner class inner class it's easier because we sharing uh, fields or variables between the whole product service class because we implemented product service as a parent class and inside we implemented no, uh, other two classes first runnable class is as a, a child class or a inner class is product info and we are turning uh, that product run product run info and here we able um, to make some stuff later product info runnable implements we just executing that line and after this we implementing another class private class uh, product rating runnable implements runnable uh, product t not working implement methods we implement it run and we need to make it basically the same private string id private product rating and alt insert constructor id and we creating a getter to get some product rating now we have the basic functionality and we need to implement our 
separate thread run method uh, where we using product rating equals product service product rating service dot retrieve and passing id uh, we just making two separate services runs in different threads like first thread and second thread and now uh, we need to fix some problems here first we need to create those two runnables and maybe we're creating here runnables uh, first runnable was product maybe i need to delete this one and this one also will be easier product runnable info runnable and will be new product info runnable we need to pass id and we have product rating uh, product rating product rating equals new rating of product rating runnable equals new product rating runnable and we passing id basically we here creating two, two separate objects instances as runnables like when you need to start the threads you need to pass a runnable or if you're creating a thread you're able to start the thread uh, instead of starting we wrapping or creating two threads like thread create thread uh, rating runnable we need to pass and we creating info thread uh, product info runnable we created two threads here and after this we need to start um, <clears throat> rating yeah and now we don't need those service calls here and here we need to return some different stuff and we just calling uh, product uh, product <clears throat> info equals our runnables is info Product info runnable get info runnable get product info. We should wait till the spreads finish and then uh, run this product rating. Product rating equals product uh, rating get product rating. Yeah, we have some product info runnable and exhibit to info runnable and uh, now we able to return the same uh, to calculate the uh, how much it takes maybe we take from here to here like to end of here oh uh, and this one also here yeah we just uh, try to calculate how much it takes here 
and when you're running here and uh, dun, 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 dun. what's wrong here execution failed Product in for Runnable. Um, uh, we implemented uh, Runnable. Uh, we forgot something because we're not passing any parameters. Like uh, we not. Maybe we forgot to do something. And. Where is that main? We have product. Okay, we have those info service, rating service, and product service. And then we using the product and we retrieve details and printing. Uh, get info. Yeah, it's not the problem. Hmm. And we are running uh, product UI product. Implement runnables. Maybe classes scopes wrongs. Here is product service inside the yeah, product runnable. And here we have product info runnable. And we have also retrieve product info, retrieve product rating. Mm-hmm. Are we creating product in for runnable for creating runnable? Mm -hmm. Okay, we need To make some joints, but we need to make also some changes. Maybe uh, info thread dot join and rating thread dot join. Oh, here also we need to add some rows. Just running. Oh, yeah. Uh, now was a problem because threads maybe not finished. It was interrupted and there is no any exception handling. And for that reason, we don't see any problems. We see that some files. Wrong. And here, as you see, we need to wait until finished wait until finished and as you see uh, it takes only 2000 milliseconds uh, because we running uh, as you see here we sleeping two milliseconds and rating service we also sleep two milliseconds two seconds so basically we instead running and waiting until it finished, we running separate threads and it works 
and it takes of course a bit more than two seconds because uh, that happens uh, but it not takes four seconds and you're able to get for example adding 5,000 milliseconds and as you see here we it took 5,000 milliseconds but it not added those two milliseconds because it finished earlier and waiting for other thread which is of course uh, it synchronized still synchronized code or it's async code but it's blocking code yeah, and blocking code it's not not great uh, solution but but it works when you really need to block until waiting because you're not able not block if you need all the results to display for example here you got image and here you get a lot of other info to display your ui because if you're not blocking and not waiting you uh, can't or you not able to display this info like if we remove that uh, product service joins I don't know, is it possible to make it now work? Yeah. Ah, now it shows where, ah, forget here. As you, you see here, we got exception in thread main Java null pointer exception. Yeah. Basically, we get null pointer exception because we uh, the thread not finished a uh, job and when you joining basically you wait until thread finished job and then you're able to get some results like it took and you printing the list of product option list and you displaying to UI yeah and basically low level APIs, it's really hard to manage. And as you see here, how much we need to add it here, like we need to create two separate runnable classes or thread classes. And then we need to create the threads. Then we need to pass those runnables, for example. Then we need to start those threads. Uh, then we need to join. And that's it. We need to do a lot of stuff when we are using low level APIs and is it okay or not you decide it but it's not really user friendly and it's not uh, nearly to uh, testing for simple testing or uh, main goal for those uh, concurrency APIs uh, evolution of concurrency APIs basically from the uh, not uh, programmer friendly or user friendly to make it more user and programmer friendly uh, API and also when you thinking uh, sequential code like when you write sequential code like here we are writing sequential code and you writing uh, parallel code or using threads it really the different between that uh, sequential code and parallel code or concurrent code and in some other frameworks like uh, parallel streams and complete completable features it really becomes uh, really same code for uh, sequential code and parallel code or async code async yeah async asynchronous code uh, because you have synchronous and uh, asynchronous code. In some solutions, you need synchronous code, and some solutions, of course, need a asynchronous code. Basically, all web is all about the uh, asynchronous code because you need to load a lot of data from different sources, and for that reason, using async code. And in Java, completable features basically is uh, JavaScript promises. And when we talking about the completable features, it's really the same as a JavaScript promises. And yeah, here basically, basically we used the thread API to work with uh, separate threads in our in the same project.